in our description are links for the recipes that we will be preparing today. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, turn it over to our executive chef here at Hogue, Chef Davis Cruz. Take it away, chef. Thank you, Megan. Well, welcome uh, to another cooking class here at the Di uh, Dick and Ellen, Mary, uh, Mary Dick and Ellen uh, Diabetes Center. My name is Davis Cruz. I'm the executive chef here at Hogue Hospital, Newport Beach, and I also support the uh, Irvine uh, Hogue Hospital. And um, I've been diabetic type one for the past 27 years. And um, if I can do it, everybody can do it. So um, uh, it, it's not easy, but you have to, if you manage uh, your intake uh, or the food that you eat, it will, it will better yourself. But then we, we ask a question, but what does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean, correct, to eat healthier? What is it? It's so many different ads and different uh, um, a study is done. Every time you look around, somebody did a study on whatever it is that will benefit your health. And it's about your body and understanding your body, understanding the core. So that your core is what drives the rest of your body. Uh, so I always put it in a simple context. If you eat three times a day, which diabetics need to eat smaller meals throughout the day, so five times a day is the preferred method. But let's say you stick to the old tradition rule, you eat three times a, a, a day, then you will have 21 meals per week. Well, which one of those 21 meals is the bad meal? The meal that you're gonna indulge yourself? It should be none, but we have grandkids. I have grandkids, they come <laughs> over, so they want a burger, they want a barbecue chicken, correct? So I might do my chicken with no barbecue sauce, and then I eliminate some of that um, uh, sugar that comes with the barbecue sauce and the molasses and all that to make a really good barbecue sauce. So it's about managing what you eat, everything, be mindful of everything that you eat. That is such a key. And, and I, I do believe that uh, food is medicine. And with that said, shall we start? Let's get started. Let's get started. So today we're gonna start with uh, the butternut squash soup. And um, see how these are butternut squash and they're very hard. And most people, uh, if you're not careful, you can injure yourself. So for this application, all right, especially, actually, in our kitchen is a rule. If you have a knife on, the, on one hand, you have a safety glove on the other hand, period. End of story, it's no argument. There is no, um, uh, there is no option. So, safety first, okay? So the bonino uh, squash is very hard to cut, so, and it rolls over. So how you're gonna cut it is very specific too. So you're gonna find the flat surface and then you're gonna hold it, just cut it in half, okay? And now you have a flat surface, correct? So now we're just gonna cut. Cut it, and then to peel it, potato peelers won't work because the skin is very hard. So you're gonna use a paring knife. Remember, using my paring knife, it makes it easier to follow the contour of the vegetable versus using that the chef knife. I will ha I just cut straight down, correct? So. I waste a lot of the product instead of just the skin. So using the correct is very important, okay? Then for this one, we're gonna cut them in half. And then we take the seeds out. Once we take the seeds out, then we can chop it up. Okay, and this is the version when it's all chopped up. Now for this soup, it doesn't have to be pretty because we're gonna puree it. So it just has to be small enough to give you time to cook in an adequate time. Okay, the bigger chunks, the longer it takes to cook. That's, that's how simple it is. The smaller the, um, the cut, the quicker you're able to uh, cut it. So then, And what about, Chef, for those people who 
maybe find it difficult to be using a knife or standing for long periods of time. What about buying Butter the butternut frozen. squash frozen? Or I've actually seen it in the refrigerator section already cut up. Already cut up yeah. on, a, on a sealed bag. Right, correct, that they, correct. they have sealed yes. that taking all the oxygen out so it doesn't mm -hmm. spoil so it stays longer so this is the more economic way of doing correct, it correct yes and me as a chef and i got myself they can cut it for me so <laughs> <laughs> and fresh is best definitely i'm just fresh. trying to help because i know everyone may not be able to do the that way correct so i got my pot right here ready to go and I got my banana squash right here. We all know what the carrots look like, so I buy them already diced actually. So we use it throughout the kitchen. And we have our onions and we have our garlic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my olive oil to the pot. And I'm using that. Thank you, Paso Olivo olive oil. I'm going to use their olive oil. Now just enough to coat the bottom of the pot. This way it just cooks the onions evenly and it will it won't stick. So it's my onions. You hear that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and trust me, I'm measuring it. <laughs> the chef way, right? So chef way. According right. to our recipe, it's just one onion diced. That's about one onion. Yes, it is. And what about carrots? And for the carrots, we have one large carrot diced. There we go. One large carrot diced coming up. <laughs> now in the culinary world, if I add celery, which we don't have it, it will be called a mirepoix. So for those of you that want to have that French terminology, this is the mirepoix without the celery. So that's the only piece, all right? So, can you smell that? Beautiful. So while that's cooking, and before I'm adding my uh, butternut squash, so I'm gonna cut up the garlic, because I need to let it sweat. So this is two garlic cloves minced. Mm-hmm. So this is tiny, so I'm gonna do two right there. So mince. So remember what I said? To mince it, you just press it down with a knife, okay? Or buy them already minced, and then chop it like that. Now, I have a better solution, which will be, you add just a, a pinch of salt to it, and look what happened. Press it, and then you can actually smash it really well before you do the final chopping to extract all the flavor. Remember, for this application, for the soup, we want to extract all the flavor because we are going to puree the soup. Yes. So we don't worry about, well, I want to eat or taste a chunk of the garlic, correct? It's no need for that. Right. So here's the garlic. So I don't know if you're watching how the vegetables are sweating right now. So some recipes call it sweating, mm -hmm. some recipes call it caramelizing. So when you hear that, it's because you want to brown it. And some uh, recipes just call them, make sure they translucent. They all mean the same, except the browning, correct? Correct. So now that being saute, ooh, it smells yes, so good. Yes, saute. Okay. So we said one large. Two. <laughs> So our recipe calls for two bags frozen butternut squash, exactly. 12 or ounces. 12 or, ounces, Or correct? 12 ounces. So that 12 ounces. Yes. All right, so here we go. Six, 12 ounces. Okay. There you go. Okay. So believe it or not, this was two butternut squash that came out. Wow. Out of two. Okay. So it's plenty of. Okay, so just mixing. And then, like, some questions of uh, 
when people are making soups, say, why can't we add all the ingredients? Why saute them? Why cook them ahead of time? Just add all, add all the ingredients with the broth and turn it on, boil it, and get it done, correct? Well, if you have ever tried both, what I recommend is if you ever want to do that, try both, and you will see that the flavor is totally different. Yeah. Because if you don't give that time to the carrot to, to, and the onions to, uh, uh, to sweat and bring out their flavors, then it means nothing. It just, it just, right. it boiling doesn't necessarily helps uh, bring out the flavor of the rest of the product. Right. Okay. So what else we have? Then we have uh, let that cook for a little bit, and we're gonna add a little bit of black pepper and the broth. Now, the broth that I use is chicken broth, but guess what? It's gluten free. So this recipe could be actually a gluten free butternut squash. Definitely. Soup. Correct. Yes. And low sodium is a good idea as well for the broth because it is very high mm -hmm. salt. Correct. So we have to watch our salt intake to have good blood pressure to keep our heart healthy if we're living with diabetes or prediabetes. Correct. So what I did is with my low sodium gluten-free chicken broth. Okay. So we got my four ounce ladle. So we got 12, 12 ounces. What did I say? 12 ounces. It's 24 ounces 24 total. ounces? Oh my yes. God. Thank you. <laughs> These four ounces, one more. And of course, you can buy these already in the cartons at the store. Correct, so cartons or, in. can you buy the canned soup? I, I'm not sure, I haven't bought the canned in a while, <laughs> but you probably can. You used to be able to buy them from a cube and make your own. Correct. Into, but I think we're all into the I think quicker Nora methods has these it. days. Correct. So on the cubes, you buy cubes, they are concentrated. Correct, yeah. Uh, so you have to have the right, correct ratio. So mm -hmm. on the box, it has a ratio of mm -hmm. how much water to the, to the cube, actually. Right. And then make sure when you add it, don't add it cold, add it hot. So boil the water, add it, and it will dilute fairly mm -hmm. quickly. So if you add it at room temperature, you're going to sit there waiting, and then it will sink to the bottom. And guess what happens if you forget? It burns <laughs> before, then, it, yeah. before it dissolves. Yeah. So now, this is a trick. You have to allow it to boil. So you let it boil at least once, and then you reduce it and let it simmer. So why boiling? Well, the reason for boiling is it brings out the impurities. If there is any impurities on the broth or any other products, it will come right to the, to the top. And then we create this, uh, this foamy uh, type of, uh, uh, of a cover and then you skim it out, okay? Mm -hmm. It has a nasty name, but I'm not gonna <laughs> say it now. Okay. Well, I, I am going to say it. Skim the scum. That's what it is, all right? So you skim the top of the, of the scum that came out that okay. is impurity. We call it impurities, but that's what it is, okay? So. What would I want to hold back? They know me already. They do. Okay. <laughs> Any newcomers, put on the chat box so we can Pull, uh, pick on you okay <laughs> yes please any questions you have please put in the chat box and we will be happy to answer them absolutely absolutely <laughs> so, so that's basically with the butter and squash and then when it's done we puree and we put some black pepper on it okay but now we can move to our other recipe while this is cooking but now what I exactly what I want to do is move to the next recipe yeah. thank you Megan oh, you're and then um, and we can come back to we it we can come back to yes. that okay so, the next recipe is really uh, spaghetti squash. Now, this is another hard one, <laughs> correct? And um, so, they, on the recipe, we put in, on purpose, microwave it, okay? So, yes. this is one that is already been microwaved. So, see how soft it is? Now, on the microwave, it takes 10 minutes, okay? The, whole, the only reason you want to microwave it, excuse me, the only reason you want to microwave it is because you will not have the potential of, if you try to cut it and it rolls out and you cut yourself, 
number one. Number two will be, it cooks very evenly. As I press it, it cooks very evenly. Now, I did some that I roast them. So to roast them, you have to put it upside down, put a little olive oil and, and a, li a little bit of water, create that steam in the oven. So then what it does is it creates a crust. So when you are going to um, uh, do the strands, then it has that darker color, correct? So let me do this one. And is it going to affect the flavor as well since you roasted it? Yes, just a little bit, not much, but it will affect the, mostly the look, mm, correct? Right. So, would you eat a regular spaghetti that has brown tips on it, basically, correct? Because right. this is simulating your, uh, your, your linguine, your spaghetti, correct? Mm -hmm. So, with this, would you eat it, correct? So, now, let's see the proof is in the pudding. So, now, it's soft enough where I can put my knife, cut in half. So it has the seeds. So we're gonna take the seeds out. See how easy it is? Very simple. I'm no no effort whatsoever. Okay. So both of our recipes today have winter squash. Mm -hmm. That's where our carbs are coming from in the recipes, but very healthy. And look at that spaghetti. Nice and beautiful. So you see the contrast in color? So it's, uh, it's up to you if, mm -hmm. you know. They're both great. Uh, cutting in half is more dangerous. It cooks faster, uh, but who doesn't have a microwave? <laughs> these days. <laughs> so this is one that I go, all right, as a chef, okay, it's, it's, use the microwave, it's easier, it's safer, okay? So then, actually, I'm going to put it right here. Hold on. So and it looks side. more like spaghetti. And again, there's so for this spaghetti squash spaghetti, it's a lot less carbs than traditional mm -hmm. pasta or spaghetti. So that's an advantage to using it. Look at how much. That is quite a bit. Right. So I like this recipe because it contains part of it being cooked, and then we have our marinara sauce, which is uncooked, mm -hmm. right, Chef? So. Correct. So I don't know how many of you have looked at the recipe closely and say, Wait a second, I don't see that I need to put in the stove top. I don't see that I have to cook it any which way. So, if you haven't been in Tuscany, and, you don't, and you're familiar with uh, bruschetta, this is kind of similar to that, okay? So we have part one of two ready to go, okay? So we have our Spaghetti squash. And let me show you, if I don't cut myself, let me show you what it looks on the seeds inside. So what I try to do is this. So you see, that's, that's a part that is more level to the cutting board. So I go in the middle here, and I go down, and I hold it, and I press it back. Okay, so I don't cut the, the whole uh, button of uh, spaghetti squash completely. I do half, and then I come back here, Press a knife, hold it, do the other half, and there you go, okay? And And are there any tricks to choosing a spaghetti squash or even the butternut squash when you're grocery shopping? Actually, when they're in season, they're all they're all pretty good. much, yeah, there okay. is not. I wish I had the avocado trick, but now I don't. <laughs> but you see how hard this one is, correct? Yes. To come out. There you go. So, microwave it. Don't fight with it. Make it easy. Yeah. Just microwave it. Very simple. Okay? All right. Let's put this over here. 
over there. Like that. Okay, so let's get. Uh, I lost power. Uh oh, oh, we lost our heat. I lost power. Okay. There we go. So now we can move on to the marinara sauce. Let's do a light marinara. Yeah. Okay. So we need tomatoes. So we have our tomatoes here. Actually, let's talk about the Roma tomatoes. Yes. So why Roma tomatoes? Why not regular five by six tomatoes or you know, yeah. the tomatoes in the backyard. Uh, Roma tomato has a very thick skin and actually and very little juice so it doesn't make doesn't make the sauce or the compost too wet. Right. right? So it stays. So first we're gonna take a little core out. They sell a little device called the jaws to clip to take it out, but they're so tiny that it makes no sense to use it in, in these tiny Roma tomatoes. Yeah. Okay, so you want to focus on, uh, on the soup, so it's boiling. So you see that white part, okay, that is forming? So I'm going to take, I'm going to lower it to simmer, and I'm going to see if I'm going to take that out. Okay. And those are what we call impurities, okay? No bueno changes the flavor. Okay, that's about it. And then we're gonna simmer it. Come on. Of course, that's chef's trick okay. added in, because that is not necessarily in our... Write it down. Yeah, so we can take Write some down. notes here take today. Some notes. That's a chef tip for the day. Mm -hmm. One of them. I know yeah. there'll be more. And then you can make it you can make it gluten-free by using a gluten-free broth. Right, okay. yeah. And even this one as well with the spaghetti squash, also gluten-free. Correct. So that's great. And if you want to use uh, vegetable broth, use vegetable broth. Right. It's all good. Right, right. So it's a Roma tomato, very simple. I'm just going to cut in half. Cut in half. Okay. See that, even if I squeeze them, there's no juices running out. And then, okay. So a total of 14. 14 Roma, tomatoes. Roma yeah. tomatoes chopped, yes. So I did. 10 and I'm doing four here, okay. so that should be. If not, I'd be here for a little while. Right. Chopping. And any tips on picking out Roma tomatoes? No, make sure that um, if the cork is as clear as possible, it's not brown. That means okay. that it's been on the shelf for way too long. Um, and that's about it. So remember the trick with avocado? Yes. So you take out that little, uh, uh, the little w where the branch yeah, uh, the touches the avocado and you, you take yep. that off. It's nice and green. So yes. the avocado will be green uh, when you cut it up in a home a few days from now. Right. Okay. Same with the tomato. So if, if the okay. cork is um, brownish, so the tomato is being out, out mm. of the okay. brine for, um, for a long period of time. Okay. All right, all right. Let me let me hear you up here. There we go. Okay. Okay. So now, so pull right here. There so here we go. You 
Here's the rest of the tomatoes. Plenty of tomatoes. Okay. So now the trick is the garlic. Correct? Yes. So how much garlic we say here? We have another two, two cloves. cloves of garlic chopped. Okay. So they're tiny, so I'm gonna use four. Okay. Okay. Never hurts to add extra garlic, right? <laughs> Never. Insignificant in calories, so just gives good flavor. Correct. Now in this application, since the sauce is cold, right. guess what? We are just going to cut it up, dice them up. It says chop. I try to cut it in half, thirds. See how cold it is to have a safety glove? Yes. So cool. Yeah. So definitely some prepping involved with this, but worth it in the end. But if you have in the house already cut up, right, then and you can use that as a shortcut as well too. So this will equal um, two cloves. Two cloves, about a tablespoon. Okay. 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 So there's my. See it right here. Okay. Next step is our shallots. So how many shallots is that? For shallots, one shallot minced. Wait. Not all shallots are created equal, correct? So okay. I'm gonna use a big one. All right. <laughs> yeah, again, these vegetables don't contribute many calories. So if you wanna do more of one or less of one to your preference, it really won't change the nutrition information significantly. And for those of us watching, our blood sugar will not have an impact on your blood sugar. Correct. Okay, oh. Oh. So you just kind of peel it like. There you go. Nicely peel. Okay. Now, if I start chopping the, the shallow, it would take me a long time, so pay attention. There we go. Cut it in half. Then I'm just gonna slide it. Go back. Okay. So how is a shallot different than an onion? Ooh, the shallot has a stronger flavor. Okay. Uh, very little goes a long way. And it's more of your refined uh, onion family, on the right. onion family. Okay. Um, so let's, let's put in context. Regular onion didn't go to college. The shallot graduated from college so <laughs> that's the way I, I like it I put it Good down analogy. it makes it yeah shallot is your you can make the best dressings with shallots you can make it you can eat it raw you can eat it sauteed you can make risottos with I mean uh, oh my god it just they're more expensive that's why most restaurants um, tend to use the onion instead of the shallot because okay. the cost cost a lot more there. yeah okay so it's a shallow, so I got the garlic, tomatoes. Okay, now let's move on to the basil. Okay. Okay. This is our fresh basil. How many leaves is there? It's one cup. One cup, okay, so it's plenty of basil. And again, Chopped you can kind of do what you want. It just says one cup fresh basil leaves, but then when you read the in the directions it says to tear them and add them to the tomato mixture. Correct. Now I'm going to show you a trick. Make sure you have your pencils, uh, pen and paper ready to go. So this is a trick. So you take your leaves out, 
kind of eyeball your basil to your tomatoes, correct? Right? It's never enough basil anyway, but kind of measure it. So I'm gonna do two two branches. Then I'm gonna take my time. I'm just going to stack them. Because I want to chop them really fine. So what would be different chopping it versus tearing it? Well, Why would this is the difference. Okay. So if I tear them, so when I tear here, correct? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use that, sa that sauce, light sauce, marinara sauce. Yes. Um, a few hours from now, that tear will turn brown. Right, okay. okay? So now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to help it mm. coat with olive oil. Okay. So that piece won't turn brown. So this is what I'm so going to do. So make note of this. So that's the olive oil. It's not enough olive oil in the world, correct? <laughs> it's the most heart healthy fat, so it's a good one. Okay. It has calories, but so then you toss good it. For your heart. And then instead of staring at it, you go. Done. And the olive oil will coat the leaves mm -hmm. to prevent them from browning. Ah, okay. And then you're going to have nice green uh, basil on your, with your tomatoes right. and your, on your mar marinara sauce. So now we toss them. So we're missing the black pepper, correct? And the fine sea salt. And the sea salt if we want to add it okay <laughs> so now let's say you are going to make this uh, sauce or compote or bruschetta type mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to serve it tomorrow don't add the salt okay because the salt is hot it will extract all the moisture out of okay but if you're going to do it immediately then go ahead okay so then salt the salt and pepper and black pepper correct yes how much salt half a teaspoon half a teaspoon and one teaspoon for the pepper there we go there we go. and the pepper of course it's really good because as you eat it you're gonna feel the little chunks of pepper. Ooh, Ooh yes, delicious. good flavor. Missing the pepper here, correct? <laughs> yeah, yes, I, I am. We didn't. Well, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we're not there yet, right? We're not there yeah. yet. Okay. Then on this recipe, we're almost done, correct? Mm -hmm. What are we missing? Just the, the cheese, correct? Cheese. Mm -hmm. So on the cheese we have, so it, it, it calls for a shredded cheese. Um, the actual cheese that it calls for, if you Google it, uh, it's very expensive. It comes from a province in Italy, and it's the one you shred. And so that, that, will, that will increase uh, um, the cost mm -hmm. and uh, increase, uh, enhances the flavor too, correct? So it's uh, more age. Uh, Parmesan cheese and it just it has that much uh, flavor profile that will increase uh, the taste of it. Okay, so so we just put the plate together, correct? Yeah. And what would be a substitute instead of the Parmigiano Reggiano cheese? Is there a substitute if we can't afford that expensive cheese from Italy? So you use a regular regular Parmesan Parmesan cheese shredded. Right. Okay. I'll try to stay away from the powder. We it will get. Uh, kind of clustery on on your salad, it won't it, on your entree. It won't it won't mix well, because most of these ingredients are uh, loose. Correct? They're right. they're bigger chunks, and this is what we have to take in consideration too. Um, I call it fork friendly. Correct? So we have a fork, and I'm able to get and pinch the the basil. Correct? And eat it like that. Right? So it's uh, spoon friendly, fork friendly. Uh, good size. Okay, so it says cheese in two spots. I yes. like that. Right. So <laughs> that means that I'm gonna play with it. I'm gonna add how much? 
so it's never enough guys never i know enough. this was the one remember this was the confusing part uh-huh so, so we're going to use a tablespoon a tablespoon and then at the and end then the end is a six six teaspoons teaspoon, optional but correct. again yeah so we're gonna go and again doesn't add anything to increase yeah. your blood sugar it's just little extra calories and flavor right chef that's it that's <laughs> it it's only calories yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Now, we have two choices. That's one. I have this done prior. See, it's the same. So, you can top it or you can mix it. So, let's do a mixing. One of both. Let's see. This one I'm gonna top it. So the goal is this: uh, the spaghetti squash should be fairly lukewarm. Okay. One of the uh, the step we used to use, and is not recommended, but if you want to, is to temper your cold tomatoes to match the temperature of the spaghetti squash. So you can go temperate. It's not about cooking it with the steam. You're just taking the chill out of the refrigerator or the cold, correct? And then as it tempers, one is not cold anymore, then you can use it. And by using, by not cooking it, you uh, you retain more of the nutrients, the vitamins in the in the vegetables and the tomatoes. Oh, correct. And then where's my cheese? That's so this is six. the optional. The optional cheese. Little sprinkle of cheese at the Actually, end. Actually, I'm just gonna put it. <laughs> or right one, there. it makes six servings, so I'm six teaspoons, so a teaspoon, just correct. like that at the, on the top of. So each we got. One. Actually, we got about six servings, correct? Yes, it makes so six now, servings. So now this one we're going to mix. Toss. We're going to toss it all together. So this is another good tip to serve it either way. Mm -hmm. Just says serve over the spaghetti squash. So. Correct. Or serve with. Right. Mix with. Mix with, spaghetti. right. You know I have to change things. I know, I but cannot. that's good. That's that, right. that would never be yeah. me. <laughs> Please make sure to put any questions that you might have in the chat box for us. And then this is the other teaspoon of cheese. All right. So here we got all mixed in or not. Correct? Looks great. On top. Either way. How about just a thought? Okay, don't. How about if I take a little of the possible olive oil and just drizzle on top? You can do that for some yeah. extra calories. You can do that, Chef. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I have to push the envelope, correct? Yes, I, I know. Have to. I but have it's, to. it's okay. It's a good it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Last but not least on my uh I'm sorry. I'm back. We're back to the soup. Yes. So we're done with our spaghetti We're done spaghetti with squash the spaghetti marinara. squash, the light marinara is done. done. Right? Okay. This is it, final product, that's it. If you want to decorate it and make it really garnish pretty, it. we can use the garnish and voila. Okay? So then we have the garnish there. Then, see the garnish? Yes. And the bigger the better, correct? Go big or go home. Yeah. There we go. Okay? Done. Now, 
Now we're really done. <laughs> Back to the soup. Everybody with me? Did yes. I got did anybody drop out of the nope. out of the cooking demo? No? They're right. shaking their head no? So All everybody's good. still here, okay? Ah. Let's talk about sage. Dry versus fresh. Okay. Actually, this herb is very strong, okay? Um, so whenever you see on the recipe, if you can use a fresh, use a fresh. I use uh, quite a bit at work, so this is my, my smaller container, okay? So I buy, this is a small, and then I have the gallon one. Uh, but this is, oh, wait. <laughs> can smell it through here. <laughs> Sorry. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna add the dry, it calls for what, a teaspoon or some? An eighth of a teaspoon of dried sage. Amazing. So how does that translate into fresh? Oh, very simple. Look at that. I have some friends from the class many years ago. I haven't seen them for a while. Actually, I will see them probably on the 29th. So I get this three uh, teaspoon. One is a pinch, one is a dash, and the other one is a smidgen, oh. okay? So there is such a thing of measuring a smidgen, a dash, or a pinch, That's correct? Great. So no need to use your fingers, so here we go. So one eighth is about a pinch? It, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so one eighth will be, so let's do the pinch. Where's my pinch, right here, okay, now. Um, whenever you're measuring, it's not a scoop this big, correct? It is flat. Level, leveled off. Level. Yes. Okay. That goes in. That's about it. Like I said, sage is very strong. If you say, oh my God, only that? No. Then you ruin the recipe. So in this instance, just follow the recipe. Okay. So then... So would you not recommend to use fresh sage in this recipe? I do. Yeah. So let's say you want you have fresh sage, just take the herbs, drop them in there. Okay. Okay. So let's do a calculation. I'm just making this up. Okay. I'm just making this up. So would one leaf would be equal to a pinch? Because remember, you have to dehydrate it right. and then pulverize it. Yeah. To get that mm -hmm. volume. So one leaf. Probably. One leaf will be a pinch. Okay. So I just add two pinches there, so we'll see how strong it will be. Okay. Okay. So then what I have here is the sage that is going to, um, I'm going to garnish the soup with this sage. Mm. So what is different? Well, I fry it in mm. canola oil. Okay. So you, uh, that's a totally different flavor that it just, oh, that much. And it gives you a little crunch for the soup. Watch. So did you just put it in a pan with some oil and fry it? Yep. Okay. So you take, uh, take a pan, some oil, heat it. Doesn't have to be submerged, correct? You don't have to use a lot of oil. And mm -hmm. then put the leaves in there and then turn them, okay? And it probably, fries fairly quickly, right? Doesn't take very it long. It doesn't take very long. Yeah. Correct. So now I'm going to check to see how the soup is going. Okay. Oh yeah. I can smash it with the back of the, of the ladle. So it's getting ready to be puree. So if you have a blender, please put it aside, let it cool off because the heat will tend to rise up and blow out. Or Buy yourself one little of these toy, one, one of these toys that I love to have, and then just blend it. Uh oh. It's uh -oh. not plugged in, chef. It's not plugged in. Oh. No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I kicked it. Oh, okay. There yeah, we go. I kicked it. That was my fault. Okay. <laughs>
my ladle sorry <laughs> the ladle went with the my ladle went to at least it's clean on the yeah. on the broth right okay so so you see how creamy very go. nice that's four ounces a normal size soup six ounces how many? One cup, one cup. According to this recipe, okay, one cup. Okay, so let's let's so you can top, do your, let's top you can it do up. your eight. That's top. That's eight. Not just with this nutrition information. Okay, that's eight. And then we're gonna take. I don't know which one. Ah, here we go. I like this one. There we go. Oop. So you're just using the leaf, you're not using the stem. No, just the leaves. Okay. Because the go. stems would be a little chewy. There you go. Right? Because you yeah. can obviously eat these. Correct. Just uh, <laughs> yeah. watch. Okay. See? Right. Okay. So that's just uh, this, uh, the leaves only. Okay. And that's your... That's your soup. Now... It's missing one last item. Okay. The best for the last. So then, to give it a little more of the look, then we use the black pepper. Correct? Done. Correct. Instead of adding it to the soup, you never know how people like more. Remember? Right. Remember when we go to a restaurant and, yeah. the, and you had the waiters going around? You yes. like more pepper? You more. <laughs> yes. So this one, you add it to the soup and it just gives you that much flavor. And then um, the fry uh, sage, it just gives you that little crunchy that you go, oh, okay, all right, Very I get nice. this. Very nice. Okay. So, uh, any questions? Anybody? Nobody? So, I cover everything? Really? <laughs> really, folks? I did cover everything? <laughs> uh, am I that good? Are we that good? I guess. So. I guess we're that good, <laughs> correct? So, so <laughs> I, I expect to see pictures of this on the. On, uh, on people's website or so I can see if you truly truly mm -hmm. are following our recipes and doing uh, some mm -hmm. of these uh, healthy cooking but I, I tell you this uh, um, uh, bruschetta style uh, marinara light marinara that we mm -hmm. want to call it that is uncooked it just uh, it just applies really well for uh, the spaghetti squash uh, stay away from the pasta stay away from no pasta needed here okay uh, be the Italian with the spaghetti squash <laughs> <laughs> and of course remember spaghetti squash does have carbs it just has a lot less carbs than traditional pasta so you do still want to watch your portion size Correct. right we don't want to eat the whole thing we want to do the best portion for us according to our needs correct correct so that's all i have okay. anybody no questions so that makes it easy that much easier right. thank you thank you very much well thank you all so much for joining us um if you are in need of any diabetes education or nutrition services please have your physician send a referral to the mary and dick allen diabetes center at hogue and we are happy to be here to support you and we do hope that you will join us for our last cooking demo of 2022 which will be tuesday november 15th again at 5 30 um, and we i think are going to have a special guest that day Absolutely. as well right chef You'll as stay, well as a great tuned. recipe to mm -hmm. to have as well um, so thank you all so much again for tuning in and stay safe and healthy good night good night